Hello! This tutorial is going to be for Hailey Bieber's viral glazed donut pearl chrome nails. These nails have gone so viral, I see them everywhere and I needed to give them a try. I can confidently say I totally understand the hype. I love how these turned out. They turned out exactly like hers as well. There's a lot of good cheap products in here. That's always a plus. As always, everything I use is in the description and of course it's all on my Amazon storefront. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you don't know the nails I'm referring to, Hailey Bieber always gets these very specific nails and I'll put some pictures on the screen. They're very plain but they're just so like elegant elegant and beautiful. They go with everything. They're very light pink usually. She's done other colors and people have done other colors. The main thing is they have this kind of pearlescent chrome on top of them. I am going to show you how to achieve that. So without further ado, let's get into the video. My nails are looking very rough in the beginning of this video. I did like three nail looks in the span of like a week and I didn't realize that I was gonna do that many. So I didn't put a peel off base coat. So I had to like remove them and I ripped nails off. And my cat during this week was attacking my hands and I have cuts on my hands. So just ignore that. First thing I'm gonna do is just push back my cuticles. I did this recently, so it wasn't that crazy and I just had to do it a little bit. Hailey Bieber always has like medium almond nails, so I'm going to be going in with these. These are from Amazon, very affordable and very good quality. These are some of my favorite ones to use. You wanna size up all your nails, making sure they fit from sidewall to sidewall. If they don't fit, make sure you pick a bigger one and then just to file the sides to make sure they fit. One thing I've been doing recently is taking my file and filing on the top layer on the cuticle area of the gel extension so then when you apply them it's much more seamless and you have to do less cuticle work. I always forget to do this in my videos but honestly getting the gel extensions prepped before you start going in and doing your nails makes everything so much easier. So we're going to use primer to etch the inside of the gel extension. I still do this on pre-etched nails. I've seen a lot of comments saying just get pre-etched nails if I don't etch them, they will lift. So I still always use primer or a drill with a sanding band to etch them. And what this is doing is it's giving it more grip. It's going to help everything adhere. This is like one of those steps that really gets your nails to last. So now that we have our gel extensions completely prepped, now we're going to be moving on to nail prep. And that first step is always going to be dehydrator. This is my favorite affordable dehydrator, but if you really, really don't wanna buy dehydrator, you can just go in with rubbing alcohol and honestly, it works the same. I just like to use dehydrator and this comes in a pack and it's super cheap. So next I'm going to be going in with our primer. A little bit of this goes a long way. So now it is time to put one layer of our Extend Gel on all of our nails. And before I get started with that, I always pour out a little dish of acetone just in case if I accidentally flood my cuticles and then I want to remove that before I cure them. And then I cure that for 60 seconds. And now we're going to be moving into applying our gel extension. Using that same extend gel, I put one thin layer of gel where your nail is going to be on the gel extension. And then I take a biggerish glob and kind of put that in the middle and scrape it off. Everyone has their different techniques and sometimes I change it up, but this honestly is what like works best for me. And I have my gooseneck lamp on the side and this is my favorite lamp. I tested another one recently and I'm telling you the gooseneck lamp is just my favorite. And then how I apply my gel extensions has changed a lot. Finally, I found the perfect way to do it for them not to lift. You don't want to shove it in your cuticle. That is a mistake I've made in the past. Put it a little above your cuticle area. You want to start by pressing it there, trying not to squirt the gel out. And then you want to slowly press down to the tip, making sure there's no air bubbles. If it overflows a lot, you put too much gel. And then if it's really hard to get it to the top and there's air bubbles, that means there isn't a enough gel. 
And then of course you can see I'm flash curing them, but after that you do want to cure them for another 60 seconds in a big UV light because the flash cure light does not fully cure them. And then I am now going to do that to my other hand. shape my nails a little bit. I actually got a new set of files just because I needed a new set really bad. If you accidentally cut the side parts of your nails, like where your skin and nail attach when filing, you could definitely benefit from doing this because I have had a problem with that because like the sides are sharp sometimes. I'll take a file and I will file all of the edges of the file. And I'm telling you this helps so so much. These are already a really nice shape. I do like my nails to be a little bit skinnier so I always go on the side and make sure they fit perfectly. And now I'm going to take a buffing block and remove all that shine so our gel polish that we go on with after this adheres better. So now I'm going to be going in with my ceramic nail bit and my drill. I usually go around a 10 RPM. You wanna blend the gel extension into your natural nail without drilling your natural nail. This part can be very tedious and I wouldn't recommend it to very, very beginners. If you're a little bit more experienced, like you've been doing your own nails for a while, definitely try it out, but just be very careful because you don't wanna damage your natural nail right here because it's gonna take so long to grow out. and it's just really not good. But what this is doing is it's going to help the longevity of your nails. This makes lifting near the cuticle non-existent. And then I like to include this part for those who do not have a drill. You can take a file that has a rounder edge and just kind of file around the cuticle area trying to blend it. I personally like the drill better because it is faster. With the file, sometimes you can nick your skin. If you are too scared to use a drill, this does work. It is efficient enough to make your nails not lift. And I wash my hands and we are going to get started with the design. As you can see, her nails most of the time are very like pale pink, natural, so I really wanted to achieve this look. I'm going to be going in with this super pale pink and putting one layer of that on all of my nails. That like wasn't giving enough, so I took this other one that's a little darker and I just put that on where my like natural nail is halfway up. I don't put it on the free edge of the nail because I'm going to be taking this milky white color. This is not pure white, it's a milky white. You can totally mix a little drop of white with top coat to get this. And I put that on the tip to make it look like a natural nail. And then just taking like a long nail brush, I just like swipe it back and forth just to kind of blend it. But honestly, these are so transparent. They blend pretty seamlessly by themselves. And I'm gonna do that on all of my nails.
and then curing that for 60 seconds. This is where the glazed donut look really, really comes in. I got the same exact one that I'm pretty sure she uses and it's the OPI Chrome Powder. This stuff is very pricey. So I'm going to be linking another one from Amazon that is super cheap because this one's like $45. It is really, really amazing, but you can get the same exact look with like a $2 one from Amazon. But you take like one of those little makeup sponges. I also get those from Amazon for like a dollar. You rub it all over your nails. And the main thing with this is you don't want to remove the sticky layer off your nails before you do this with rubbing alcohol because if you do that, the chrome powder will not stick to your nails. And then don't worry if you get it on your skin because after top coat and we cure top coat, all you have to do is just rub it off with some rubbing alcohol or it literally comes off when you wash your hands. After I'm done with the chrome powder, I'm going in with my favorite top coat. This top coat is definitely worth the money. This is like one of those products that I totally recommend splurging on because it doesn't get scratches, it never peels. I love this top coat so much. I cure that for 60 seconds, and now I'm going to be taking some rubbing alcohol. I love these little pump bottles I got. They've made my life so much easier when doing my nails. Just removing that sticky coat, and as you can see, it took all the chrome powder that was on my cuticles off. And then, of course, finishing the look off with some cuticle oil. Also putting it under your nails because that part can get really dry. And that is my attempt at the Hailey Bieber nails. I definitely understand why these are going so viral. I love these nails so, so much. They're just so clean, effortless, and so beautiful. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Love you. I don't know if you like the way I put my words together, but I need you to stick with me just like some birds of feathers. But my breath to scales, hand to hand, dropping corn straight down the well. Wish me well, wish me well. Always talking about the fishing scales, things that's gon' throw my mind off focus. Probably what's gon' get my drug use.